Um, so my book is set um, on the east coast of Australia. Um, one of the strands, um, there are two strands, but I won't go into that, it's too complicated. Um, but one of the strands um, deals with Leon, who is growing up in the 1950s in a cake shop in Sydney, um, and he gets conscripted fights in Vietnam. And the, the bit that I'm going to read is quite close to the end, um, when he's returned from fighting and found that he can't return to work at the, at the cake shop, he can't keep his mind on it. Um, and he decides to head off into the desert to explore a bit. Um, he's, he's lived in the suburbs of Sydney all his life, so um, he, doesn't, he hasn't seen much of the country. Um, he breaks down in the desert, like a lot of people do, when they don't know the desert very well, they don't take enough petrol or water. And at this point, um, he has been rescued by a small group of Vietnam vets who are living in the desert together. And they're all sort of, um, imagine, imagine Hell's Angels, but benign. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, um, Clyde, who's kind of their leader, um, takes uh, takes Leon off into the desert to have a chat with him and talk about their sort of the significance of the place and, and their kind of the aura that they're trying to produce from all these guys in the desert. After Leon had been there a few days, Clyde took him out to show him around the old grazier station and shoot some rabbits. No bugger can see us from the road, he explained. The place belonged to Colin. He was supposed to be rearing cows on it. They come to a fallen tree, the only tree as far as Leon could tell, and Clyde had produced a sack of rotten oranges from his backpack. He started lining them up on the tree trunk. Pretty unusual to get a fellow out here on his own. Were you supposed to be on your way to something? Just getting a look at the country, said Leon. Never really seen much of it. He wondered if he'd be asked to leave. Working life, eh, said Clyde agreeably, as if he himself were a keen businessman. Easy to forget about it out here, he nodded to a fat pink sky. Clyde loaded the rifle and sighted it, the tips of his fingers black from engine grease. He lined up, taking his time, then he looked at Leon. Mate, this is something close to heaven he said, and squeezed off a bullet, which exploded in orange, and its sweet smell came into the air. He passed the rifle over. It's a pretty unusual place you've got here, Leon said in what he hoped was an even voice. The orange vibrated in the sights. It had been a long time. Can't thank you enough for helping me out. He shot the orange, and it burst, and he felt a deep well of satisfaction. When Clyde next spoke, taking his aim carefully, the log now wet from juice. His voice was tight, but his words were slow. His tongue darted out of his beard, pink and quick, to wet his lips. This is where a man can just be his fucking natural own self. Clyde shot and missed. He breathed in deep through his teeth, and as he exhaled, he shook his head, putting the gun down at his side. There's some of us, yourself included, I'm sure, have seen and borne witness to a number of terrible things. And as you'll know, those things haunt a man. He handed the gun across. Leon found his arm suddenly lacked the strength to lift it. And at home, everyone wants to act like we haven't seen those things or done those things. But we have, and it's not a fair thing. It's not. Clyde was watching the oranges, so Leon looked too. I got a friend stepped on a mine out there. We all heard the click. He stood still and we all got round him with our ideas. Tried holding it down with a bayonet. Tried it from every angle. Thought about tying a rope around his middle to pull him off. But we couldn't have gone quicker than the blast. We knew that. Thought up ways all afternoon. Meanwhile, he stood there sweating at 21 years old. So in the end, he says to pile up his leg with rocks so the mine will only take off up to his calf, or maybe he's lucky, just his foot. And anyway, he's standing there crying and shouting, telling us all to get the fuck away and piss off. And we all take cover, and you can just hear him there, on his own, crying and swearing. 
Then the boy does it. And after the bang, after all the dirt comes down over us and there's that smell, we scramble up to him and he's white in the face and the whole leg's off and the other foot too. And he died. And I told everyone there, went round telling them that if any bastard ever talked about it again, I'd shoot them in the face, no trouble. He turned and looked Leon in the eye. No buggers looked after us. Leon lifted the gun and took aim again, but now his heart bounced his arms. See, Clyde went on, but here, we're all in the same boat. I could tell you all, or else you wouldn't have come rambling through the desert alone and half smoked. This is the place a bloke can let loose. Clyde sucked air through his teeth again. From the corner of his eye, Frank was aware of him, stretching out his arms at the sky. He pulled the trigger just to have taken his turn, but the bullet still found its mark. He looked at the place where the, where the orange had been, surprised. Clyde carried on loudly. This is man town. There are no women, no children. It's just us. He gestured to the blasted oranges like they were a field of daffodils. And we can do what we want. <laughs>